Hey there, thanks for clicking on this video. If you're watching this right now, there's a chance that you either might want to quit your day job or you might be in the rough circumstances where you've been fired or you might have been laid off. And I've been there before myself. This video is going to help you sort out your money, your priorities, and your future if you find yourself leaving your 9 to 5 job for any reason. And this is going to be my honest, no BS advice that I wish somebody had given to me. The first thing you want to do is make a plan to quit your job or for if you are forced to leave your job because on a long enough timeline this is probably going to happen. One of the first things you should do in making that plan for exiting your job is to look at what happens to your health care coverage. You need to know what's going to happen to your health care insurance. You need to have a plan for that. Now if you're under the age of 30 and in good health, you might actually qualify or a catastrophic coverage plan. You'll want to do your research, you want to look into this, but other than that, you really want to just see what happens at least the next 30 to 90 days when you leave your job and what happens to those benefits. The next thing you're going to want to do when you're leaving your 9 to 5 job is you want to immediately be able to replace that income. So the thing is, I wouldn't wait until you quit or until you're fired to start replacing that income so you're not reduced down to a zero income. You want to be able to start making money right away. Hint, don't think that you're going to start a YouTube channel or start a business and make money right away. It usually is not something that makes money in the first 90 days. Many people do it at a loss for years. So let's think of a real plan for you to immediately start making money before you even leave your day job. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to start with freelancing, just like I did, or with gig work with one of these apps. You're going to want to go ahead and start making as much spare money as you can every single day so that you can have money saved, so that you can pay down any debt, or you can deal with some of the immediate stresses in your life, knowing that you have another source of income. So if anything happens to that quote unquote good steady paying job that everyone talks about, if something were to happen to that, you want to know that you're not reduced to nothing and that you have the ability to take care of some of your immediate needs. Now, if you become a freelancer, you may be able as a freelancer or a gig worker to join a freelancer's union. Now, granted, there's a lot of things going on, so do your research. This may have changed in terms of your ability to qualify for that, but this might be another way for you to get healthcare coverage if you're going to be on your own and independent for any period of time. Now, before you quit your job, Make sure that you're getting everything you can out of your job, or even before you might be let go or fired or laid off, if you have a heads up about that, or if you suspect that's something that could happen, you wanna get every single one of the benefits that your job offers. So this might include certifications, they may offer some assistance with going back to school or getting training, don't put these things off. Go ahead and give up your spare time and do the extra work to get the certifications or any of the training or assistance they offer. Maybe they offer some vocational training or community college classes for you to be able to do. Go ahead and make sure you're doing that. If they offer any other type of incentives, make sure that you're getting full advantage of those while you still have the job. If they offer any kind of industry certifications that would be transferable or apply to something else, make sure you're getting that. Speaking of benefits, you'll also want to look into your 401k if that's something that uh, you've been investing in, hopefully you have, and it's something hopefully that your employer offers and matches on. You want to know what would happen to the money that's been put into your 401k if you should leave the job or if you're terminated. So before you quit or should you be fired, you need to know what happens to that money that's been set aside for your retirement. I would also look into, before you quit, setting up your own solo 401k. You want to obviously talk to a financial advisor or a CPA. Possibly, you might actually have this free through your bank. You may be able to talk to a financial advisor through your bank at no cost. So this is something that you'll want to research and look into. Before you leave your job, you'll want to make sure that you're getting as many references and recommendations as you can. And ideally, you'll want to get some of these on your LinkedIn profile and you'll want to start tuning that up. I have a video that you can watch. I'm going to link in the info card and the description down below if you actually want to optimize your LinkedIn profile and kind of put yourself out there, build your personal brand, get your resume fine tuned. This is going to be important in terms of looking for new opportunities. You might be leaving your nine to five job to go and to start a better career or a different career, move to a competitor or to a better overall position. And even if you're looking to start your own business venture, this actually will be good when people look you up, when they Google search you 
and this might help you with prospecting clients just to see that you're reliable and that you have referrals and recommendations from other people in your previous career. So don't overlook this. It's very important to make sure that you're doing this. And if at all possible, when you leave your job, try not to burn bridges if it's at all possible and leave in the most professional and dignified manner that you can. This is not always an option for people. Heck, it wasn't even always an option for me. Uh, sometimes you have what they call irreconcilable differences. So just be as professional as you can, be as cordial as you can, even if other people involved are being unprofessional then don't let that dictate your standards or your reputation. You never want to be in a position where you can't look back at your previous career with some pride and also where you don't have anyone you can turn to for a reference to your work and to your character. So this is something you want to keep in mind. Now here's a little bit of tough love and this is why it's called no BS advice. Don't assume that you're going to leave your nine to five job and that you're all of a sudden going to be a good entrepreneur or that you're going to be able to do something on your own, like start a YouTube channel and be wildly successful. This is something that is extremely difficult and you already have the mindset of an employee. It takes a long time to develop the mindset of a self-directed, self-disciplined entrepreneur. When you leave your nine to five job, you need to do things like stay on a schedule, just like if you were still at work, and you have to be consistent. And too often, people leave their nine to five job and immediately form bad habits. So you need to stay disciplined and you need to go ahead and hold yourself accountable. But if you are going to become an entrepreneur, you need to realize that it's going to take discipline, consistency and patience and that there's a very good chance that you're not going to be able to replace that income in 30, 60 or 90 days through an entrepreneurial venture. That's being impatient and wanting to just like have absolute freedom in a way that you haven't been prepared for. What I would recommend is looking at this as an opportunity to hit the reset button. There's a chance that in your previous job, you weren't in a position where you had a lot of experience or leverage to negotiate a fair or a good salary to begin with. This may be an opportunity to move up in the world and get another job in your industry, but at a better salary now that you have experience and now that you've worked for somebody else and you have references. So this is a new opportunity to move up and to take your time. And maybe you might be in a better position to become an entrepreneur while you're doing this because now you have a little bit more breathing room if you're making more money. The other thing I recommend is, like I said, before you even quit, have a side hustle. If you're making good money from your side hustle and it's getting close to the point where it can replace your income, I would take a nine to five job instead of going all in on your side hustle or your side business if it's actually a business. I would say make sure that you have some kind of stable, steady income. Make sure that you're doing gig work whenever you don't have the ability for your main side hustle to you know, be lucrative. Sometimes you'll have a bad week, a bad month, there won't be clients or there won't be money coming in. You want to make sure that you always have some kind of cash flow because having anxiety about money is just going to cripple you emotionally and you're not going to be productive at anything if that happens. I know this is probably not what you want to hear, especially if you're quitting your nine to five job. You don't want to hear get a part time job or get another job that you like a little bit better. You, you'd love to probably be an entrepreneur, but it's very hard to do and you should take it one step at a time and you should be preparing along the way. And you do that, in my opinion, by diversifying your income first and building entrepreneurial habits because it's hard to break the habits of being an employee. Now, the way that you're going to start to build toward potentially being an entrepreneur is you're going to need to focus on your personal and professional development. Now, there are going to be people that say that giving up your hobbies and your leisure to work all the time and to do side hustles and gig work and to pursue your business and not do anything else in your free time, giving up Netflix, giving up video games, giving up hanging out with friends. There are people who are going to say that that's part of the toxic hustle culture. But you'll also find that a lot of those people probably never legitimately struggled because if they did, they would know that not everyone has the luxury and the privilege of work-life balance when they're in a difficult financial situation or when they're trying to dig themselves out of the hole. Ultimately, what I tend to believe and what was true for me when I was at my worst in the last recession 
is that a season of hustle is better than a lifetime of hardship. I want you to repeat that after me. A season of hustle beats a lifetime of hardship. Working hard now, reaping the benefits later, and knowing that it was worth it. I'm not saying it's gonna be easy, I'm saying it's gonna be worth it. That is important because at the end of the day, you have a lot of people that think that they can have it all at once, and you can't. That's arrogant. You have to be willing to make sacrifices, but it's your responsibility to make sure that your sacrifices are worth it and that you're not making them unnecessarily and in vain. And that's why having a plan for everything is so very important and needs to be a practical plan that is based in reality and something attainable, not get rich quick schemes and not, you know, delusions of grandeur. It needs to be something that is very practical and very fiscally conservative. What I would recommend is in your free time, when you want to do something that's not work, that it should still benefit you in the long term. I recommend having a robust fitness routine so that you can build your stamina and strength. Building a better body is going to be beneficial to you no matter what happens in life. And being able to take care of your body and preserve your health and your youth and your strength for as long as possible should be one of your number one priorities anyway. And when you're not doing that, because you can only do so much of that um, and maintain, I recommend reading books that are helpful. Uh, even reading books for leisure is fine. They don't always have to be business or personal development books. I have a few recommendations here. I'll link those down below for you as well. You can also get a free trial of Audible and get two free audiobooks. But I think that reading in your spare time is going to help you with uh, you know, taking your mind off of things. It's also going to give you ideas and keep you motivated. And it's also gonna help you develop more discipline in terms of your mind and eliminating distractions and just being able to focus a lot better. If you do things like watch Netflix or play video games, you're giving your body cheap dopamine and you're making it easy to get distracted and harder to focus over a period of time. Those things are fun and I like to do them. But when I was struggling financially, I knew that they couldn't be a priority and I knew that they weren't going to help me long term. They were just going to make me feel better and comforted in the short term at the expense of working toward my future. One of the most important things you can do when you quit your nine to five job or if you're just in any financially difficult situation is to figure out exactly how much money you need and start tracking your expenses. I recommend using the Mint app. It's totally free. You can go to mint.com. You could also use Truebill. You'd be surprised sometimes how many little expenses or subscriptions you have. And so being able to track those, cancel things, negotiate reduced rates, those things can actually help you. And also I recommend making a direct plan to start saving. Saving money is something that's going to be very important, especially before you quit your job so that you have some breathing room and so that you have a little bit of runway to figure things out. You know, most Americans, 60% of Americans don't have $1,000 in savings. You could beat that number by just saving as little as $3 a day, 365 days a year, it adds up to over $1,000. If you get to a point with your side hustles where you can put some of that money away, if you could put away $30 every single day from a side hustle, even when you have a nine to five job, you would be in a position to save $10,000 in a year. And for many of you, that could be life-changing. That could help you begin to get toward the down payment on a house. It could help you get out of debt. It could help you have that emergency fund that you really need, or it can help you address some of the issues in your current lifestyle that are leaving you just feeling um, completely deprived. So I, I really think that saving money and earning more money are two of the biggest priorities you can do. And I don't think you should wait till you quit your job. And I don't think you should wait until you're fired. I think you should do it right now. If you're already having financial hardship, research resources that might be available to you. Be surprised. Go to your local small business center, go to your local community college and see what they're offering. There might be free vocational training available. There might be free grant programs available. There might be free assistance for people that qualify in just certain situations. You'd be surprised how much is there for you in your own local community if you just go and do the research and if you just are someone who has the humility to ask for help when they really need it and not let it get to a point where you're in a desperate situation. And I wish that when I was going through most difficult times in my life that I'd had more humility and just asked for help and taken advantage of resources that were there for me. 
instead of bullheadedly trying to think that I could do everything myself. Relying on one source of income will become a constant point of anxiety. I want you to not wait until you quit or until you're fired. Start the beginnings of building multiple streams of income by starting a side hustle or doing gig work. Look into ways that you can take advantage of your time and then start learning to build things. You don't always have to work for a living. You could build for a living. You could build things that create value and that pay you more than one time. And this is something I talk about frequently on the channel when I talk about automated income, what a lot of people refer to as passive income. I know people think it's a buzzword. I like automated income because I think it's more accurate and more honest to what we're talking about. We're talking about building things where people put money in and get the value they want out and you've automated a transaction so that you don't have to keep doing active work once you've set this up by creating the value. This could be anything from designs, templates, t-shirts, even doing something like a YouTube channel. I talk about this all the time. I'm going to link to a playlist here and in the description down below. If you want to see a video on how I diversified my multiple streams of income, I'm also going to link to that for you because I think it might inspire you and give you a few ideas of what is possible. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. If you found it helpful at all, if you really enjoyed this no BS advice, I need a huge favor from you. I think that this video could help so many more people if it is the number one ranked video when somebody searches quit your day job. So if you guys could help me out and share it wherever you can, drop a like on this video, leave a helpful comment, anything you could do to help put this video at the top of YouTube search and Google search would be amazing because I think this is probably some of the best no BS advice that anybody's gonna get on this topic and that's very realistic. So if you think that that's true, I really just appreciate the help. Like this video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out the other awesome stuff on the channel. As always, you guys, thanks so much for watching. And don't forget, go out there and create something awesome today. Take care.